Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against you. You only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with the burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Do good, design your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, in whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Psalm 130, verse 3 to 5. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. What is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution. That is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should plead guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of as we do in the Lord's Prayer, but before the pastor. We should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts. So today is February 2nd. It is Groundhog Day, yes. Um, so you're going to wonder to see if the groundhog sees his shadow, to see how much longer winter will be. But it is also the purification of Mary and the presentation of our Lord. Because it is 40 days since Christmas. 
So I'm going to read here from um, the Treasury of Daily Prayer. I'm going to read about what this feast day is all about. And so it writes, 32 days after Jesus' circumcision, in 70 weeks after the announcement of John's birth to Zechariah via the angel Gabriel, the Lord comes to his temple to fulfill the Torah. The days are indeed fulfilled with the presentation. With the presentation. Jesus' parents keep the Torah and fulfill it by bringing Jesus to his true home. Also, Jesus' parents offer the alternative sacrifice of two turtle doves or two pigeons. Leviticus 12.8 allows this instead of a lamb, since not everyone could afford a lamb, showing the poverty and humility of Joseph and Mary. Yet no lamb was necessary, because already here at 40 days old, Jesus is the lamb brought to his temple for sacrifice. Simeon's Nuctimidus is a beautiful example of the immediate response to this inauguration of God's consolation and redemption in the Christ child. Speaking to Mary, Simeon also prophesies about the destiny of the child, which you could read about in Luke. You could read the whole event of this in Luke chapter 2. So... Uh, we're gonna, we have another reading we're going to go to today, but let's first pray. Almighty and ever-living God, as your only begotten Son was this day presented in the temple in the substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading for today, we're going to go with the Epistle Lesson for the Purification of Mary in the Presentation of Our Lord. So let me bring that one up for you. So Hebrews chapter 12, beginning at verse 14. says strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which no one will see the grace of God see to it that no one fails my slight apologies I had to pause and restart replay this because I started reading the, re the wrong passage it is not chapter 12 it is chapter 2 my bad so ignore that one at the beginning. It's chapter 2, verse 14 to 18. So this is the actual one. Oof. All right. It says, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself, Jesus, likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who is the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being. So that is the text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little bit of a devotion here from Cyril of Alexandria. He was a, one of the church fathers. And so this is continuing on this theme of the presentation of our Lord. Let me bring that. It says, After circumcision... She next waits for the time of her purification. And when the days were fulfilled and the fortieth was the full time, God the Word, who sits by the Father's side, is carried up to Jerusalem and brought into the Father's presence in human nature like ours, and by the shadow of the law is numbered among the firstborn. 
For even before the incarnation of the firstborn were holy and consecrated to God, being sacrificed to him according to the law, oh, how great and how wonderful is the plan of salvation. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. He who is in the bosom of the Father, the Son who shares his throne and is co-eternal with him, by whom all things are divinely brought into existence, submitted nevertheless to the measure of human nature, and even offered a sacrifice to his own Father. Though adored by all and glorified with him, and what did he offer? As a firstborn and a male a pair, to, uh, a pair of turtles or two young doves, according to the, what the law prescribed, but what do the turtle and the doves signify? Come then and let us examine this. The one then is the most noisy of the birds of the field, but the other is a mild and gentle creature. And such did the Savior of all become toward us, showing the most perfect gentleness, and like a turtle, moreover, soothing the world and fulfilling his own vineyard, even as who believe in him with the sweet sound of his voice, for it is written in the Song of Songs, The voice of the turtle has been heard in our land. For Christ has spoken to us the divine message of the gospel, which is for the salvation of the whole world. So, let us pray. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers, that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all.